Ephesians chapter 6, and we're looking at verses 19 and 20 tonight. Uh, next week there will be no Bible study, as we are uh, going to be in the auditorium for the awards ceremony for Awana. So we invite you to come and be a part of that and uh, take in the awards uh, service and all of the presentations that are going to be done. Um, we have two of our young people are going to be receiving the citation award, which is the award for a young person that has gone through every book in Awana from right the beginning, right through to the end of journey. And uh, there are 12 young people in all of Canada receiving that award this year, and two of them are here at Golden Harvest. So we praise the Lord for that. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 6. And verses 19 and 20. We'll be, uh, next time we are together for Bible study, we'll be completing the book of Ephesians. <coughs> and uh, looking to see what we'll be doing next once we uh, get through this book. Uh, Ephesians 6, 19 and 20 <coughs> says this. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Uh, there are times, uh, I think, when all of us feel a little bit guilty or we feel a sense of shame for the fact that we are not as bold as we wish we were. Uh, as it when it comes to giving out the gospel and sharing our faith with others. There are times in which uh, I think we all experience in which the Spirit prompts us to say something to someone. Uh, whether we're in a store, we're in a conversation with someone, and the Spirit just tugs at our heart and says, speak up. And many times we fail to heed the Spirit's prompting. Uh, and that gives each of us a, a bit of a sense of shame. But as I read this text tonight, I am struck by the fact that Paul, the Apostle Paul, who many have referred to as being the Prince of Preachers, asked the Ephesian believers to pray for him that he would be filled with boldness to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Uh, everybody suffers from bouts of fear. Uh, that's a given and uh, uncertainty and just a little bit of timidity. Uh, I'm reading this devotional book written by Will Graham, who is Franklin Graham's son and Billy Graham's grandson. And uh, he shares this story, and I thought it would it fit here tonight, so I'd like to read this to you. Several years ago, Kendra and I paid an Easter visit to my grandparents at their house in Montreal, uh, North Carolina. On our way back home that afternoon, we pulled into a little gas station on the south side of US Route 70 to fuel up and be on our way. I patiently stood in line while the people in front of me made friendly conversation with the clerk behind the counter. Nothing's free anymore, the man chuckled as he handed over the money to pay for his purchase. Something incredible happened at that moment. Immediately, God told me to speak, and he even provided the words to say. The Holy Spirit led me to share the gospel with these people, saying, Tell them what Easter is all about, how that God paid the debt for you through his son Jesus, and in return he offers salvation for free. My friends, that's what I should have said. Sadly, I kept that proclamation to myself. I regret it to this day. God called me to share his hope on that glorious Easter with people who likely needed to hear it, but I disobeyed him and kept it silently in my heart. Frankly, I chickened out. The very first Bible verse that I memorized as a young boy remains one of my favorites. Luke 12, 12 says, For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that hour what you ought to say. And it's 100% true. The Holy Spirit guided me in what to say, but when it was time to step forward and follow his leading, I didn't do it. I disobeyed. 
I made a covenant with God that day that I, if ever I felt him speaking to me again, I would share it boldly and not hold back. Who knows? Sharing the words God gives us may be the difference between someone spending an eternity in heaven or in hell. The difference between a life of hope and a life of discouragement and despair. I encourage you to listen to God as he speaks to you and to be his mouthpiece as he speaks through you. We need to take every opportunity available to us to share his saving message. So as we read these two verses, what stands out to you? What do you feel is important or speaks to you? Or what observations can you make? Boldly mentioned twice. All right. Boldly. Mentioned twice. Absolutely. Anything else? I can relate to what you uh, what you just read there. I can relate to that because I I've, I've run into situations like that. Have you? I relate to that where I I should have spoke up, and uh, and I've had to deal with that late date much is much worse. It was uh, for that same person. It was much more difficult. Yeah. Well, if I had dealt with it to begin with. If I had dealt with it when I should have dealt with it, it would much easier. Yeah, absolutely. And now uh, I let it go, I let it go, and I let it go. And uh, it was far more difficult then to deal with the situation. It was far, it was, it wasn't as effective. Yeah. I if think I had, if I had dealt with it like I dealt with it before with other people. Mm -hmm. It's been far more effective. Yeah. But because I didn't deal with it, it wasn't effective. Yeah. Yeah. I think anytime we sense the Spirit prompting us to do anything, <coughs> we ought to do it without delay, right? Sometimes it's simply pick up the phone and call this person. You know, and sometimes we get busy doing other stuff and it, it doesn't happen. Uh, you know, the Spirit prompts us go apologize to that person. We ignore it, speak to that person, share Christ with that person, and we ignore it. Uh, and we're not alone in that because I think all of us at one time or another are guilty of just shutting out that still small voice and doing our own thing. I think the Lord's impressed on me in these days where it says the church um, in the last days will be falling away. Is falling away of the church? And I've wondered whether, I mean, we look at that as saying that, yeah, okay, people aren't coming to church. But I wonder whether it's really the fact that we've fallen away from studying the Word. We are not being, listening to the Holy Spirit when He prompts us so that we're just falling away and just happy about what we're doing, just going on with life. Uh, I just wondered if that's one of the things that we're falling away in the, in the yeah. end times. Yeah, I guess it's possible that, that that's part of it. Because the, I think the church has fallen asleep. Oh, the church has been asleep yeah, for a long time. Yeah. Um, that's just. Yeah. The church has been lulled into a sense of security yeah. and comfort. So. And all I right. think it, I think it's easy for for people today, for Christians today, to win it. It's easy. You've got a yeah. whole rack out there <coughs> of, of uh, tracks. And it's, it's so easy. You can just give it to somebody. You just talk for a few minutes to somebody and then you just, I just have to give you one. You, you, you never meet again or whatever mm -hmm. you've got. Yeah. And you can share sometimes. Sometimes they're just going to take that. Yeah. So there's no excuse. Uh, there is no excuse. No, there's plenty of resources. And certainly the days in which we're living yeah. provide ample uh, conversational Absolutely. basis. Absolutely. Okay, let me read to you uh, these two verses from the Amplified Bible. It says, And pray for me that words may be given to me when I open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of salvation. 
for which I am an ambassador in chains, and pray that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly and courageously as I should. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Tony Morita, who is the author of a commentary on Ephesians, says this, The greatest theologian missionary of all times is asking for prayer. That should encourage you. He has the position, as do we, of being an ambassador, a representative of Jesus Christ. But he knows that he does not have sufficient resources to communicate the gospel effectively. So he calls on the church to pray for him instead of feeling self-pity or resentment. He asks for prayer for the mission. Uh, and that is true. That, uh, you know, when you think of Bible heroes and you think of uh, all of those men and women that we read of and we we kind of set up on a pedestal that they are probably better than I am and they're probably, you know, stronger believers than I am. And Paul here shows us his humanity. He shows us that he's not a lot different than anybody else because he asked for boldness that he may open his mouth and proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Uh, we looked at verse 18 last week and we talked about what Paul says here about praying always with all prayer and supplication. And we said that uh, verse 18 that deals with prayer is attached to the discussion on the armor, the spiritual warfare that we're involved in. Uh, if you look at the punctuation sometimes in scripture, it is uh, telling as to whether the writer is starting a new thought or whether it is a continuation. And what we have here is a colon so that it is a continuation of what he's been talking about, about taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And he continues the thought with praying always. If you look at the end of verse 18, there's a semicolon. So again, it is a continuation. Now, an English teacher might have a fit with the run-on sentences that sometimes we see in some of Paul's writings. Uh, but Paul is continuing the thought. So he has just said last week, we, we talked about praying always. And so the whole concept, the whole thought is about prayer. Verse 19, as he's talking about prayer, he says at the end of verse 18, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me. All right? He's telling the church to pray for each other, which is what we should do. We should pray for every single child of God within the body of Christ that we are aware of and even people we're not aware of. We should be praying for them faithfully, that God would give them the strength, the encouragement, the boldness that they need, the perseverance that they need. So he continues the thought and says, And pray for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Uh, what do you notice about his prayer request? What stands out to you about this specific request? What do we know about Paul? Let's just kind of review what we know about Paul. And I think it, for me, it, it kind of is profound of what he asked for rather than what he could ask for. So what do we know about Paul? <clears throat> All right, he was persecutor of the church, right? He met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus when a bright light blinded him and the Lord spoke to him. He began to preach to the Jews and then he went to the Gentiles. But as we go through Paul's writings, we find what? That he had a thorn in the flesh, right? And there's a lot of speculation as to what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. But in Corinthians, Paul says, I besought the Lord three times that he would take it away from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I find it interesting 
when we come to this verse 19 that Paul isn't saying and pray for my infirmities pray for my arthritis pray for my lumbago pray for my bad hip pray for my thorn in the flesh he's saying pray for me that I may have boldness to proclaim the message of the gospel. It wasn't for his thorn, it wasn't for his freedom, it wasn't for his comfort. It was mission focused. Paul, even in the midst of confinement, was focused on the mission that God had called him to. And I think that is profound. Warren Wiersbe writes this, Note that Paul did not ask them to pray for his comfort or safety, but for the effectiveness of his witness and ministry. How do we miss the mark many times in our prayer request? What are sometimes our prayer requests? We pray more for the physical. That is to be helped, the Lord to help them to spiritually, so they can reach out to people. Exactly. Now, is it wrong to pray for the physical? No, it's it's there's it's not wrong. It, we we ought to be sharing our requests with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ought to be praying, lifting up each other in prayer. But Paul was focused on the mission that God had given him, and he was praying not that he'd be free even to carry on the ministry, but that as opportunity arose, he would have the boldness to open his mouth and say what God wanted him to say. He was he was Christ focused and usually usually we well I am usually me focused. Oh, I'm going through this Lord, please help me get through this. Yeah. For me. Whereas yeah. Paul is saying for Christ and salvation and the cross and for the people out there, please be saved. And I think it's easy for us to become me-focused, right? I mean, we're the ones going through the trial. We're the ones that are experiencing the, the, the difficulties and the heartaches and the, the, the problems and the physical ailments. So it's, it's easy for us to be self-centered, if you will, all right? I may not be the best word there, but it's easy for that to take place. I'm convinced, and and folks, you know, I've been wrong before, and I may be wrong when I say this, but I'm convinced that if people were involved in other people's lives, their problems would become a little bit less pronounced. As we involve ourselves in people's lives who have legitimate needs, who have problems, I, I met with a lady today who lost her husband, and uh, she was asking about Dave Collison. And I thought, you know, like, here you are, you've lost your husband, and, and you're thinking about someone else. That, I think, is uh, something that we all ought to try to do. I'm sorry? I've got to say amen. Amen. Uh, when we look at other people's lives, it kind of puts our problems into perspective because there's always somebody that has a bigger problem, bigger heartache. That's the virtue of this is you've been the focus on this. You've been, this has been going on for 60 years. This has been the problem with the church. It isn't just not a starting thing. This has been, we've been faced with this problem for as long as I can remember in the church. And that's why the decline, declining in the church. Yeah. It can't be feeling bad, just go to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Just to visit somebody or go to a nursing home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you'll soon find out you yeah. don't have any problems. Absolutely. Paul says here, and for me that utterance may be given unto me. So opportunities to speak, that opportunities for me to speak up for Jesus Christ, 
and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So where is Paul at this moment in time? As he writes this passage, where is he? He's in prison, all right? He's in Roman custody. He's chained to a Roman soldier. He is not in the best of surroundings or the most comfortable of surroundings necessarily, but he is still focused on what God's asked him to do, and he's asking for God to give him the boldness to speak up for Jesus Christ. Uh, what is his job as he states it in verse 20? Well, he didn't know what he was required to fulfill. That's the first given up. That's when the word liar. He wants to speak his about salvation and gospel. Yeah. A lot of people kind of give up and say, well, I'll just let it go. I'm dead anyway. But no, he wants his, his word signed up. Yeah. Absolutely. He describes himself as an ambassador. An ambassador is one that does what? Represents, Represents a foreign power, right? So the uh, ambassador of Ukraine in Canada is representing the government of Ukraine and speaks for the government of Ukraine. Paul here and all of us are ambassadors of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We are his representatives. Our job is to speak for him and to tell others about him. How does it encourage you that Paul asked others to pray for him as he proclaimed the gospel? Do you find any encouragement in that at all? I think it's in, Kathy, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you've ever tried to share the gospel with someone, you know how your heart starts beating like that, and your mouth gets dry, and your the the little voice in the back of your head is saying, oh, "What what are you doing? They're gonna they're gonna think you're crazy. They're gonna make fun of you. They're gonna talk bad about you." I find it encouraging that Paul, of all people, asked for prayer for boldness. Uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, uh, who we all know was a powerful preacher of years gone by in England, and he is referred to as the modern day, or the modern day at that time, Prince of Preachers. He had a little group of people that every service he preached there were a little group of people in a small room underneath the platform and specifically underneath the pulpit that were praying for God's power mm -hmm. to be upon the message. They were praying for him to have boldness to preach the word as he should. Why does Paul need boldness? Because it's easy not to. It's easy not to. <laughs> You remember from uh, science class, you remember a little thing called inertia? You remember what inertia is? Oh, come on! I never went that far in school. That's just a momentum, isn't it? It is. Inertia is the energy it takes to overcome resistance. the resistance of a, of a vehicle, if you will, being stopped and being in a position where it's not moving at all. It is the energy that's necessary to get that vehicle moving. Yeah. Inertia works against us when it comes to proclaiming the gospel because it's easy for us just to kind of coast to a stop and just kind of observe and stand there and quietly take in everything that's going on rather than speaking up. The, uh, the very next story in this book um, 
is from when uh, uh, Will Graham was in um, Australia and uh, they had had a crusade and uh, they were at a little restaurant having breakfast uh, at the conclusion of the uh, crusade and uh, this young girl walked into the restaurant and she had just landed at the airport and was hitchhiking across Australia to Adelaide. And uh, she was gonna hitchhike through the outback and the outback's not necessarily the safest place in Australia. <coughs> and uh, one of the ladies at the table struck up a conversation with her. And uh, as they were talking, this older lady asked this young girl, Denise, can I tell you about Jesus? What a great way to start a conversation of sharing your faith. Can I tell you about Jesus? You know, that's all that we're called to do, is to tell people about Jesus. We're not try called to win arguments. We're not called to convince people. We're not called to be uh, apologists or debaters. We are called to simply tell people what Jesus has done for us. And as I read the Gospels, and as I read the book of Acts, that's exactly what they did. I see that hand. A youth, a youth, a unique way was, when I was down, my wife and I were down, going to Florida, going to Texas, I'm not sure, we're having dinner in a restaurant. I wasn't a believer at the time. A lady came over to my table. She must have been watching the parking lot. She says, you're from out of town. I says, how did you know? I says, I've seen an Ontario license plate on your car. She says, we're glad you, we, we invite you. We're glad you're here. And you would, what the words were, it's exactly what she said. She says, but she welcomed us in her own state. She kind of got into conversation and she gave me a trap. And she said we're staying on and invited her to her church. It happened to be a Baptist church. Here goes Baptist. But I thought it was an encouraging, uh, I thought it was very encouraging and uh, I thought about that. I thought about that a lot of times after a way of how people reach out. Yeah. I thought about many times after how I was in, I'm not taking up your time, but no, I, I, I was at the, um, in the church here when Dave Mogg was here. Yeah. I walked back to that, introduced myself. Oh, he said, well, I know you. I said, how do you know me? He said, I've read your track. <laughs> I said, you are McDonald's. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. But it just it shows that uh, I can't leave him there no more, but uh, just uh, <laughs> but uh, it's encouraging how people Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how, how many times you people you 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 remember. Yep, absolutely. Danny? Just a quick mention. Um, two, two things. Uh, McDonald's, but um, uh, and, and how the world is so knows nothing about God. Right. And, and it's bad. I mean really bad. I've said this from both before about my wife. I'll fall back short. But on Sunday I was in McDonald's. When I went in to get my coffee for my wife and I, and uh, the kid was there, and he was new, uh, struggling with the girl helping him. And so I said to him, oh, I said, uh, I see you're, you're new, eh? And he said, yeah. I said, oh, your name is Joshua. I said, I've got a grandson named Joshua. And then I said, and Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. And he looked at me. I said, yeah. I said, 
said just a few minutes ago that Paul is in prison. He's in Roman custody. Uh, he is going to be giving an account or going to be speaking before who, whomever at this moment in time, whether it's Nero or whether it's Caesar. Uh, he is going to the, one of the highest levels of Rome that he can. So I don't think it should be surprising for us that Paul is asking for boldness. Because he's he's in pretty deep water as far as the Roman authorities go, yeah. and he is going to be appearing before those who are in charge of the Roman government. So he is indeed asking for boldness as he prepares to defend himself, but not just to defend himself, to share the gospel message. Knowing what his background is. Yeah. 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 Uh, John Phillips writes this in Exploring Ephesians. He says, This is an example of how to employ supplication as a means of smiting the enemy. We can offer supplication for brothers near or far away. Prayer annihilates distance. Paul was under arrest in Rome, and his readers were scattered throughout Asia Minor, but prayer takes no account of distance. He goes on to write that prayer annihilates dread. Paul was chained to a Roman guard, charged with treason, and expecting to be arraigned before Nero. Yet the prayers of God's people could help him overcome his fears and cautiousness and enable him to speak boldly. Near the end of that section, Phillips writes this. We do not understand how prayer works. How a brother praying for me in Southern California can lift my spirits as I minister in Northern Canada is beyond my understanding. How my prayers in Chicago can bring a fresh surge of victory to a believer in China, I cannot say. You and I only know that when God considers all the aspects of a situation and all the forces that govern the universe, prayer is one of the key factors that he takes into account. Amen. We know Amen. prayer works because God says it does. Amen. That's right. And uh, we need to be ready to be praying for our brothers and sisters. And Folks, if prayer can defeat the miles, then we should be praying for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We should be praying for those who are struggling in China against an oppressive regime. We should be praying for those who are under uh, the rule of Putin at this moment in time, that the gospel would not be hindered, that it would go forth boldly and powerfully, and it would reach people with that glorious message. Uh, in the biblical illustrator, it says this, from what has been said, we cannot but observe the connection which exists between a successful ministry and a praying people. Uh, for the work of God to be successful, people need to be praying. Uh, and when God is at work, we, we know from firsthand experience, when God is at work, the devil multiplies his efforts. He works hard against what God is trying to accomplish. And so we need to be praying. We need to be praying for boldness for ourselves, for each other, that we would have the boldness to speak up and tell others about Christ. We need to pray for the encouragement of saints around the world and within our own local body of believers. Uh, we need to pray for healing for sickness. It's not wrong for us to share our prayer request. Uh, that enables the church to truly reach out and minister to someone who is struggling. You know, and, and I know that there are a lot of people that are private. <clears throat> and 
they don't like to share their personal struggles and the things that they're going through because they don't want the attention. They don't want people to feel sorry for them. I get it. But at the same time, it is good for us to be able to have people in our corner lifting us up in prayer so that we can overcome what is facing us. We need prayer today. Anybody here in need of prayer? All right. Pretty much everybody. Uh, we all need it. Uh, and so for us to be able to be praying intelligently, we need to share with someone. You may not want to share it in front of the whole church, but you need to share your request with someone, that someone can be praying for you. Preacher, I just appreciate the fact that uh, two of the deacons of this church came down in the garage, and we were able to sit there by the side of the stove and have a prayer. Awesome. And we just had time of prayer together, and we were able to share and have prayer together and, pr and to pray in each of those church. It wasn't here. It was down there side of the fire we got the snow is there and we're and it's not it's not just one time or the deacon of the church step that we're, we're able to have prayer we, we do it often amen but it happened to be at two of the deacons this time and we sat down and we had prayer and uh, I, I appreciate the fact that we we're able, able to do that and uh, and uh, uh, bring in the, the needs up of the church and, and uh, we even pray for you, preacher, once in a while. We do. Yeah, we do. I don't know why, but we do. Don't, don't stop. Please, don't stop. Um, Satan knows our frailties. You know, the Bible says that God knows our frame, that we're but dust. But Satan also knows our frailties and he mm -hmm. plays on them. Amen. And uh, if if it is fear of man or if it is a, uh, a timidness of speaking up and sharing the gospel, he will play on that and he will do the best he can mm -hmm. to make that seem to be a mountain mm -hmm. when really it's nothing that big. Sometimes the person that God prompts you to speak to, you'll never see them again as long as you live. Yeah. But yet we're scared to speak. You know, um, and I appreciate the fact that Paul is asking the church for prayer, not for his circumstances, not for his aches and pains, not for all of the problems he has, but that he would have boldness when the time came to speak up and to do what was right. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a couple of things, and I want to just share them as I prepare to close here tonight. I think we need to be ready. We need to be ready to pray for each other. We need to be ready to open our mouth and to share the good news of the gospel. Uh, we're told to preach the word. And some would say, well, that's just specifically the preachers. But I don't Amen. think so. I think it's every one of us. We're to preach the word. And you preach the word by living the gospel and by sharing your faith. Yes. It's not a, a three-point sermon behind a pulpit. Our lives are sermons. The way we live is a message about the grace and the goodness of God. Uh, and so I think we need to be ready. We need to be ready to pray for each other, to be speaking up. I think we need to be bold. Uh, the word bold here that Paul uses <coughs> means fearless, with courage, or boldness, confidence, or frankness. It's not a cockiness. It's not an arrogance. But it is speaking lovingly and compassionately Amen. and clearly Amen. about we, what Jesus Christ has done for us. Uh, folks, I encourage you, when you're reading through the Gospels and you're reading the book of Acts, look for examples of people telling others about Jesus. You will find that it's always telling people what Jesus has done for for them. Amen. And Paul, even in the book of Acts, Paul said he, he gave testimony to what he had seen and heard. It wasn't some fancy argument. It wasn't some long convoluted message that, uh, you know, took ages to understand and, and 
get into his mind. It was simply telling people what Jesus had done for him. Uh, and if you got nothing else, you've got that. They can just hear it if you start talking about the Bible. Because mm -hmm. this translation says that, you know, they can say yeah. that. But they cannot dispute their personal testimony. No, they can't. Because it happened to you. That's for certain. Um, so we need to be bold, but I think we need to be obedient. That Paul says here, uh, where is it? If I can find it, it'd be helpful if I was on the right page. He says, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly uh, uh, to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Don't lose that last few words because that's the key to everything. The key went off the... Oh. Did it? Yeah, it just flashed. I mean. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. I guess the internet yeah. left us. <laughs> you got the key to everything in there. So. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Uh, as I ought to speak. Every child of God needs to be a witness. Uh, and, and I, you know, as hard as it is sometimes, as challenging as it is, as much as it scares the socks off us, uh, we need to be telling Jesus, uh, people what Jesus has done for us and uh, sharing the gospel. Uh, we battle on in this sin-sick world because people uphold all of us in prayer. Uh, there are people that pray for you every day and I know that there are many that pray for my wife and I every day and uh, we need it we each each of us respectively need the prayers of our brothers and sisters in Christ and it's not just for boldness but we need prayers for boldness as well any questions or comments as we uh, wrap things up I, I think you know some people when they share they might have a gift for sharing over someone that maybe doesn't have that same gift. Um, but that shouldn't stop us from sharing. But but I know there's times, uh, and I'm not bragging. This is not this is not me bragging. But there's times I was at Silverdale yesterday, and this this guy was told me he was 71, and he'd been 18 for a year, and he broke his hips, and and he said, you know, what am I going to do? Uh, People say you should sell all your ATVs, and he says, I'm just going to sit at home and die. And I said, well, you need to get right with God. And I just felt an opportunity there, mm -hmm. and I talked a little bit about it, and he just stopped talking, and he's just looking at me, and he just kind of grinned, and then just went right on his explanation of how he lives. And that's okay, mm -hmm. because, you know, we don't always have to be and maybe this is just me, but we don't always have to be goal-oriented when we share Christ with other people. In that, there's not going to be necessarily a beam of light that comes down and shines on that person. But we're planting a seed, and then it's up to God to do what he will with that type of soil for that person. Yeah. Right? But sometimes, you know, Kathy in the home or, or Arthur in McDonald's, it might be different for them. It might be more fruitful, or it might be more fruitful for one of us another time. It's almost like a salesman. You know, he has to make, or she has to make 10 cold calls to get one or two sales. Yeah. And, you know, this shouldn't discourage us, nope. even though we're human and it can be discouraging. We just need to keep pushing on. Yeah. And me on Avon today, I had a new customer. I started sharing about what the Lord has done for us. Go, oh, we believe in Jesus too. Really far. Like, she grabbed me by the hand. She says, I believe this was God appointed today that you came here. Amen. There are a lot of divine appointments in all of our lives. Yeah. Today, it's so much easier because all you have to do is talk about the world. And what end time that the world come to an end right away people are yeah. listening and uh, yeah. agreeing I, I find it so and I, I'm not I, I'm the worst as far as trying to share I, I, I admit it 
but I find if you just mention that, people open up right away. Yeah. And the other day I was talking to another guy, and uh, and I he had come to our church to be talked to us in our other churches, different guys, him and his wife, and, and I didn't know if he was saved, and, and I, I just kind of started witnessing all of us to him, and I said, uh, have you asked Jesus come into your heart? And he says, yeah. He says, oh, I'm not afraid of dying, he says. And we got talking there for a minute, and then, and I and I told him that I, I usually give out tracts, and that's why I asked. And uh, and he says, and we're talking, and he says, give me one of your hands. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I just I find it so easy today because people don't balk at it because they you see the world and it seems hopeless. Yeah, that's what I find. Anyway. It is. <laughs> like it I is. Said, I'm not a, <laughs> I am not a person who can. Yeah, and, and, you know, there, there's a lot of people, and, you know, this message lesson tonight's not necessarily on personal evangelism, but uh, we're headed in that direction. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a lot of people that just feel hesitant. They, they don't mm -hmm. feel that they know enough. They don't mm -hmm. feel comfortable enough that they know enough scripture that they could answer arguments. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we're not called to be apologists, you know? You said it, you just... Give your testimony. Give your testimony. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's all you need to be able to do. Yeah. There comes a point in time where the Bible says one plants a seed, one waters, and another reaps the harvest. There comes a point in time where that person is going to be ready. And the next person to talk to them about Jesus are going to say, hey, you know what? I need him. <laughs> and yeah, after easy. the person wipes the sh shocked look <laughs> off of their face, they'll be able no. to share with him and, no. and maybe lead him to the Lord. But Kathy, um, I think when you're referring to why you're the sower, why you're the water, and what God just laid on my heart to share with different people, whether it's the phone company or whoever I'm dealing with, just asking, "Can I say a word of prayer for you?" Well, this I actually did it at Dewey's. I was getting actually some uh, some devotionals for a lady's call, and a lady there, her name was the same as mine, Kathleen McCaffrey, and uh, when I got finished, I said, can I pray for you? And she, she actually, in the case of COVID, she grabbed my hand, and so I, I prayed for her, and I always read the gospel and the best, best story and resurrection, but I prayed for protection from COVID and things like that. Well, it turns out, a year before, Jean Dyer had sent her the COVID daily track. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I, I, I was just part of that chain. Mm -hmm. So it's just like it was so open. And I, when I mentioned her name, she said, oh, I sent her that track, and I told her how our church prays for people, you know, the frontline workers. And so I didn't know that, but God did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's awesome. It's awesome. We just need to pray that we'll all have boldness. <coughs> it's like Paul. Alrighty, any other questions or comments? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the discussion we've had for, Lord, the Word of God and how it applies to where we live. Uh, Lord, we're in pretty much the same boat as Paul. We may not be in prison, but, Lord, we are in need of boldness. Mm -hmm. And so I pray that you may give us a boldness that goes beyond human explanation. Help us, Father, to fear no man, mm -hmm. but to... Follow your leading and your leading alone. Father, I pray that you'd bless us through the remainder of this evening and, uh, Lord, until we're able to meet again as a church. We pray you'd keep us safe and watch over us. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless.